Hey, welcome back to Greg's Maker Corner. In this video, I'm going to be covering an unboxing of the Micron Plus Kit from West 3D. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I'm pretty big into DIY builds. The last machine I built was this VZ bot you can see over here and find on my channel. You may be wondering why I decided to go with the Micron Plus, and that's because it really takes the best of the Voron machines that I really love and enjoy to print with. The Voron 2.4 which has a flying gantry, and the Voron Zero, which is a small but powerful machine that's great for fast heating and getting going with your 3D prints. The Micron Plus is technically not a Voron, but it is designed by Hart K, who is a member of the Voron design team. The Micron Plus is in a family of printers called the Printers for Ants. So hey, uh, let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed. And as you can see here, I do have several different boxes from West 3D. And that's partly because I've got a few orders and I also ordered the 3D printed parts. You do have the option with West 3D to order 3D printed parts and those are going to be provided. And I think it's a great way to save some time and get into your build quicker. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get the unboxing started here. And we've got a nice note from Daniel from West 3D. And a little information about uh, what they sell and frequently asked questions and also a checklist of everything that I ordered. This is nice. As far as the DLL PDF frame goes, I know they're gonna be sending that to me soon. So that will not be shown here, but I will show it. We've pretty much got everything laid out real nice. We've got these strips here, metal strips with the Micron logo on it, which is pretty cool. Some uh, really slick Ambrosia filament stickers, cable chains, some VHB tape, and some fans. These are Berserker branded fans. So we'll see how those hold up. But I'm, I'm looking forward to trying something a little better than the uh, stock fans that usually come with the Voron Zero. And I've got a Fetus Rapido Hot End 2. So this is one of the upgrade options you can get. And this is gonna allow me to do high flow printing. Hey, look at that, some candy. Caramel apple pops. That'll be nice when I'm building something to keep my mouth distracted. And we've got, let's see, looks like this is probably the screen. Let's come with a nice touch screen. There's a little power supply here and a little sticker. And this is a solid state relay. I went ahead and upgraded to the Omron. And then we've got a wiring harness here. So this is pretty slick. Now I am not sure I'm gonna use this wiring harness because I, I might end up going CAN bus, but this is really nice because if I do decide to use it, you can see everything is already pre-crimped. And you've also got your little connectors here. We've got some additional wires for the power supply and whatnot, SSR power supply type stuff. And these are even, look at that, they're even labeled. And I'm planning on doing probably a, either a dragon burner or a rap, rapido burner, rapid burner. We'll see what I decide as I get to that part. Got the V0 tool head pancake board. It has all the wires, and I think that's what the harness is designed for. So you can plug it right in here, save yourself a lot of time, and then go directly back to the MCU by connecting here. So that saves you a lot of time and headache. Oh, we've also got a Raspberry Pi 4. and from what I remember on the website, if you already have a Raspberry Pi 4, I can mention that. I think you can get it without it, but I've got several of these, but it's always good to have extra, so I'm glad that it comes with this. Got a USB stick and an SD card. Kingston, nice, decent name brand one, too. That'll be for the MCU. Speaking of the MCU, we've got the LDO Leviathan. This is a great board. And it's, I believe it was actually designed with the Micron in mind, or at least Borons in mind. It's got all the right connections. It is a little bit bigger board, especially for a smaller build like this, but I think it'll be fine. This looks like the, the bearings and the motion system stuff. Oh, some zip ties. Gotta have those. Got some magnets. Little plastic bearings. The AC inlet looks decent. Got a fuse. That's what you want to do with these types of builds. And we've got some bearings. These are uh, an upgrade to the Berserker kit bearings. Uh, we've also got the feet for the bottom of the printer. And some other plastic pieces here. It's like some 
limit switches for X, Y, and Z. We've got belts if I decide to do the stock Z drives. And then we've also got belts for the A and B motors here. Those are tiny belts, they are six millimeter. And some pulleys, quite a few of these. They look like they're nice quality ones. I do really like these trays. I've seen these on some different kits like the Cyborgs have been doing this lately. But it's nice to kind of keep everything together while you're doing your build. And down here we've got the heated bed. And this is an edge-to-edge -edge heater. That's really nice. And there's a West 3D plate here. And a Mix 6 aluminum, nice and thick aluminum plate here. Hopefully nice and flat, which I'm sure it will be. We've got some PTFE tube. And this is all the paneling for the machine. And of course the rails. Gotta have rails. These all look like they're stainless. And they're labeled Berserker. So these are the West 3D brand. They feel good. I'll definitely be checking them out in more detail in a bit. This is the larger rail. And then we've got the rest of them. The, these are all probably MGN7s. Yeah, this is a LR9H. And these are LR7Hs. These, they look like they're great quality and they've got the little rail stopper plugs in the end, which I like. Yeah, there's one more tray. Which makes sense because we've got a few more parts to get out. And down here we've got pretty much all the electronics, the motors and stepper drivers and the orbiter. I'm really excited about this. It's an LDO Orbiter V2 and this is a really good extruder. It's really consistent and reliable. I normally go with LGX lights but I'm looking forward to trying this. I've heard a lot of good things. Got a little rubber ducky in here. That's cool. I know that usually comes with big tree, whoops, big tree tech stuff. And you can see we've got these big tree tech steppers. And I think they're 2209s. Pretty sure they are, but I'll have to double check. Yeah, 2209s. It's interesting how many of these little guys there are. So these are all the little pancake steppers. It looks like there's four of those. We've got these larger motors and these are NEMA 14 steppers, 1.8 degree. These are specifically designed for the Voron kits. We've got the boop kit. The boop is kind of like, it's like a mini tap. And I've never actually built one of these before, but I've heard good things. So, I mean, you might as well go all out, right? If you're gonna do a build, just go crazy. So that's what I'm doing. I love these fasteners. You can see they're very high quality. It's the, the BDF fastener kit. And all kinds of fasteners, screws, heat inserts, and they're all stainless, so they're not going to rust. These are Wagos, and I'm not a big fan of this style, so I will probably be doing my own thing when it comes to the electrical. I, li I do like using the Wagos, but I don't like using these. Um, this is the SSR mount. This is nice. And we've got some bearings, quite a few bearings here. MR148 2RS. And these are going to be used for, I believe, the Z drives. So I did do the G2Z. I think that's what a lot of this stuff is for. Some stickers. And what do we got here? This looks like the, the Bontech dual drive gear. And this is the Triangle Lab. This is another upgrade option. You can get the hardened gears, which I, I did. So. That'll, that'll last many years to come. Now, I do have this option, so I could do like a stock uh, tool head, but since I've got this, I don't really need both of these, but I may, I may try them out. It's nice to have the option. Uh, you've also got some just motor wire and things. It looks like a little extender if you need it. I usually make a lot of that wiring myself, but this kit can save you a lot of time. Of course, we've got our power cord. And next up, let's take a look at the printed parts. If you're looking to save a little time on, on your build, definitely go for the printed parts. Now this is cool, these are the little nut bar inserts. So I picked two colors, and I, I happened to pick the Ambrosia ASA, which is a West 3D filament. And ASA is a really good filament, I prefer it over ABS because it does have some additional benefits with UV resistance. And 
I will put the colors in the description. Cool, I love how it has like a little bit of a sparkle in it. That's something that I try to get in all my parts nowadays. They're very sturdy. And man, the quality on these is great. If you do happen to get printed parts, uh, you can expect what I would call, this is definitely PIF quality, print it, uh, print it forward program. You have good overhangs, um, good, good, uh, good walls, good layer adhesion. And um, you don't have any kind of defects on the walls. So yeah, these are really nice parts. Top layer on these, uh, you can see here, like the, the tuning is really good. This is what you want to see when you've got a well dialed in printer. It's not, you don't have ridges. It's just, you just barely see the, the layer lines. So that's really nice. And then this is the, the bottom of the part where you can see the textured plate. So again, really good. You don't see any warping on this. So sometimes when you print them yourself, or if you don't, if you don't get real good adhesion, you might see your corners coming up, but these are perfectly flat. I'd definitely like to give a shout out to Brian Almeida who printed these parts. Yeah, these are just really good quality. This is going to be the skirts where the AC inlet goes. These are roughly 150 for the Micron Plus. You can also get printed parts for pretty much any printer. And um, this is the, the type of quality that you're, you're going to be able to get. My understanding is if you, if you do happen to have a maybe a, a bad part or something, you can contact West 3D and they'll, they'll get you sorted. From what I can tell, everything looks really good here. This is really nice. You actually get a copy of pretty much everything that was printed. Oh, and here's the colors. So I've got Ambrosia Black ASA, which is the black, and then Ambrosia Galactic Gray ASA. And here I've got the extra filament that I bought from West 3D, just in case I need it. So this is Ambrosia Filament. So food of the gods, it's filament of the gods. Perfect. Ambrosia filament, galactic gray. Good, I got the right kind. Now, one thing you are going to need to be able to do 230 to 260 for print for your hot end temperature, and you're going to need to go at least 100 for your bed, and you also are going to need to have an enclosure. Any Voron printer can handle this just fine. I've got my black roll here as well. If and when I need to print some upgrades or maybe reprint a few parts that I ham fist, I've got my spare filament here. Because this isn't an official Voron project, the documentation isn't going to be quite as good. The support as well. You're probably not going to find as many folks that are using this printer. All right, as you can see, there's a lot here going on with this kit. There's a lot of good parts, a lot of good upgrades. I would like to thank West 3D for sponsoring this video. I did pay full price for pretty much the base kit plus a few upgrades, but West 3D also threw in uh, several upgrades. So what you're looking at here is probably about a $1,400 or so options. That includes the printed parts and pretty much all the things that you can upgrade. The good news about this kit is if you are looking to be more budget conscious than that, you can get one for around $800 and you're going to get pretty much everything you need minus the parts to build that kit and get started. Now, if you're considering this over say a Voron Zero or a Voron 2.4, I would honestly recommend probably going with one of those other models first especially if it's your first Voron. If you are limited on space and maybe you want the flying gantry like I do, uh, the Voron 2.4 may be too big. The nice thing about the Micron Plus kit is that when you build these, you're going to get about a 180 millimeter by 180 millimeter build volume. So that's a really good volume and it's really not too much different than say a Prusa Mini or a bamboo mini. Uh, it's kind of that same type of build area. Uh, the benefit, of course, is that you get the high quality uh, Voron uh, components. You also get the flying gantry. You can definitely push the thing pretty quick. This is not a printer that I would recommend for any beginner. This kit, in my opinion, is really geared more towards folks who have already built a Voron and they're just looking for that next thing that's maybe a little bit more challenging than a, a, a typical Voron build. So hey, with that in mind, I am really excited to get going on this build. I am going to be waiting for a few more components to arrive. Hey, I hope you enjoy this build with me. And I'm going to be going through some highlights and probably just talking about my general build process as I go through this. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment and I, I'll try to get back to you. So thanks again for watching Greg's Maker Corner.